Okay, so here we have a very common biology question and a very common biology practical. In fact, it is the practical that you'll do for required practical three as part of your A-level. And as I've mentioned in a previous question, we can work with potato tissue, we can work with apple, we can work with carrot. And the whole point of the experiment is to try and find the water potential of the cytoplasm inside that plant tissue. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take either tubes or like cylinders or we're going to take discs and we're going to soak them in different um, concentrations of sucrose or salt solution and basically then you're measuring either the length increase or decrease or the increase in mass or decrease in mass. So let's have a little look. In this question, it says a group of students carried out an investigation to find the water potential of potato tissue. The students were given a potato and 50 cubic centimetres of a one molar uh, per decimeter cubed solution of sucrose. So what did they do? They used the one mole sucrose to make a series of different um, concentrations and indeed you need to do this as part of your required practical three that's exactly what you do and they cut and they weighed the discs of potato and left them in the sucrose for a set time they then removed the discs of potato tissue and reweighed them so the table below shows how one student presented his processed results so we can see their increasing concentration of sucrose solution and the percentage change in the mass of the potato tissue. Now these questions are always very generic. They're very formulaic in what they're asking and in the response. Let's have a look. It says explain why the data in the table above are described as processed results. Well anything that's been processed like a number it's had a calculation done it on it and that is indeed the answer. All you need to write is that calculations have been made using the raw data. So the raw data is what we collect and the process data is what we end up with after we've stuck it through the calculator. Okay, B, describe how you would use a one molar per decimeter cubed solution of sucrose to produce 30 centimeters cubed of a 0.1 molar per decimeter cubed solution of sucrose. Well, when you work that out, you need, if you think about it, you need something that's a little bit more than what, uh, 0 0.1 molar, which is basically a tenth of the one molar solution, and a bit, a little bit less than uh, 0 0.2, so it's somewhere in between, and you're producing 30 uh, cubic centimetres of it. So all you're going to do is add 4.5 cubic centimetres of the solution to 25.5 cubic centimetres of water. Now, if you're unable to follow that, please do look at some of my other videos which look at how we make these molar solutions in more detail with a little bit more explanation. Okay, looking at the next question, it says, explain the change in mass of potato in the 0.4 mole per decimeter cubed solution of sucrose. And if we look at that result, we can see that the minus means that it's lost water. In fact, it's um, changed in mass quite considerably, and it's 3.8. So the what we're asked, we're not describing, we're explaining. Explain the change. So we're going to be talking in terms of water potential because we're now at A level. So we're going to talk about the difference in water potential inside the cell and outside the cell and why the water moved. So for the marks, we're going to say that the water potential of the solution is less than that of the potato tissue. So the tissue loses water by osmosis. And remembering that when we say that the water potential of the solution is less than that of the potato tissue, we mean it's more negative. And therefore, there's more water in the potato tissue, so more water is going to move out. And for the last part of the question, describe how you would use the student's results in the table above to find the water potential of the potato tissue. So the first mark you need to talk about, you would plot a graph 
And in this case, the mark scheme wants you to talk about what goes on the x-axis and what goes on the y-axis. And that's why you're always better to do that. Some mark schemes do want it. Some mark schemes just say plot a graph. So do it if you are confident of how you would do it. In other words, you're going to say put the concentration on the x-axis and the percentage change in mass on the y-axis. Uh, for the second mark, you then need to talk about um, find the concentration on the x-axis where the curve crosses that x-axis. And, of course, that is different from when we've looked at a ratio, which is where we were looking for the one-to-one. -one. Um, but in this case, it's literally just where it crosses that x-axis. And you also got a mark for saying that you would use your points to draw a line of best fit. Thank you.